Gender inclusion generally has to do with giving opportunities to people regardless of the gender. So in, in a setting, you should expect to have almost like um, as you're having the males, you have the females in terms of a distribution of um, uh, staff per gender. And um, to me, the advantage of having that is that it fosters, um, it, fo it fosters improvement and productivity. Do you think female athletes, footballers, for example, should earn the same amount as male athletes? What do you think about that? Because <laughs> yes, please. come on, it's football. They are playing the game. same thing, so equal work, equal pay, and they are exposed yes. to the same kind of risk. So, <laughs> if you can pay, who is the highest paid footballer now? It should be female. Should male, be male. Um. This, this okay. Victor Simeon. So why can't you pay our Oshuala same, same amount? amount? Because she's if her leg gets broken, she would need the same fund to fix her leg or if her back something. So I think the that bias is not only locally, even internationally. Yeah. yeah. Uh probably it could be that because female I suspect I don't know, I can check and validate. I have a feeling, you know, football, male football came in and way, before. way way before mm. um and then in terms of sponsorship in terms of sponsorship um if you approach two sponsors and you you have a male team a female team and that bias is still there they'll go for the male team mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's uh it's something that um, i think probably the okay, football so companies could look at in fact, I I don't know whether I'm the right person because I don't watch football at all. Oh I God. watch football, so <laughs> I watch whether football. it's male or female. <laughs> but I know that um, the energy level is different. Okay, the way that Messi and Ronaldo will play football is going to be different from the way that the female will play. We are women. There's so much that we're built with, you know, for the fact that we are women, and that might limit <laughs> us also to the way we, you know, approach the game. <laughs> So, yes, that will also uh, affect the pay. Because mm -hmm. you don't, you know, football is not just, there's a lot that goes with football, yeah, you know. Right. There's uh, the the commercial, the, the yes. economic part of it, yes. the earning part of it. Yes. And also, so, in a, women, yes, who sell to, women really don't watch football that yeah. much. Oh yeah. <laughs> but we are seeing a lot of women in the recent time pay a lot of interest. Even referees, yeah. women referees. Um, I don't do I've they seen, do it because it's, yeah. it's, it's passion or is that what they want or because they just want to <laughs> because I'm just looking at it uh, like the children when yeah. you look at the game right now the young kids that are young boys they, they they just grow up all of them in this world wants to be a footballer but again how many of our female yeah. kids I feel, come out to say I want to be mm -hmm. a footballer so I feel it's the training and the doctrine which yes. pushes the female you people don't take the girls to the pitch to play ball. You take them to musical class, ballet class. But the question is, how many opportunities are even open to the female child to learn how to play football? Well, let's begin. That's why yeah. somebody has to start. Sure. So how many so of the local you, clubs do you have that are female? That's it. So, you know, is there a so lot of... So this is a call. call to all football, <laughs> every sporting centers. Yeah. You need to give ladies, girls, a child. Yeah, but I think really that uh, male football is more interesting and entertaining. But when, oh my when, 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 when I'm, I'm just that when, my view really. Sorry, <laughs> when 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 male football when they are losing, we also tilt back to the female football. I've seen when Super Eagles flop, we always we watch, need hope. Yes, we go back to seeing the Falcons play. I think the consciousness the football authorities need to work on. There should be football academy for females, uh, and uh, even from the primary school level. You, know, you must be able to entrench um, female football from the scratch and then people grow up. So if those opportunities don't exist, then, then even globally, yes, female football is really is com is coming on strong, yeah. but male football still dominates. What are some of the common challenges or barriers that women face in corporate world and how has UBA addressed them to foster greater female inclusion? Okay, so number one I would want to take is the gender pay gap okay and in addressing that uba in our pay system we i haven't heard anybody says or oh, whether a male or a female or young or old say i i earn uh, this amount because i'm a male or that female earns x amount 
our pay, the gap is specifically on the grade and not based on age gender. or gender or, or, or role. So that is, is very important to know. I think one of the common barriers I can also see for women generally is that, you know, women are seen as, you know, the weaker sex. They are seen as, you know, um, people that should just sit back. They should not really be at the forefront. They should not really be at the top making major decisions because they are saddled with, you know, the family front, the home front, and the rest. There was a rating I saw online that we have one of the highest representation of women. And that speaks to the mindset from the top because they believe women can do it. They can do what men can do, and mm -hmm. they can also deliver results regardless. One of the ways in which UBA is also giving back is true recognition of achievement, where, you know, if you do good work, you will get incentives and you get promoted. Could you share success stories or any experience in which there was effective implementation of strategies to promote gender inclusion and diversity? What were the key factors behind its success? I think I can speak for myself because I'm a success story. Um, I think in the last four, five, six, seven years, I don't think we've had a female treasurer in UBA PLC. Wow. So I count myself as a success story. And uh, I believe what went into the decision as to whether she should be a country treasurer was regardless of gender, what can she deliver? Skill. Mm -hmm. And so the skill was brought, to the, was brought to fore. A lot of discussions beyond gender was not a consideration, but in terms of the what the skills yeah. are. I have a younger, a younger colleague of mine who just joined the institution and then you expect that because it's a female you should give the bank like two years or one year so you at least you're productive enough before you take <laughs> in and get pregnant and then we find out after one month of joining she's pregnant okay wow. and you know once you're 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 pregnant we expect that your productivity level goes down and then you know all those sickness and all those things comes on on but again, UBA being who we are, we understand that such happens. So we had to help her through the system, making sure she's not feeling, you know, that, oh, I've gotten pregnant or something is going to happen to me. No. So I think things have actually her. changed along so the way. So a lot, a lot, a lot is really going on. And I can say that the female folks in UBA are very happy you know, working here. Well, I would um, like to disagree that okay. productivity level goes down in pregnancy. Pregnancy <laughs> can be unique to people. Mm. So I joined UBA when I was pregnant. Mm. So while I was being interviewed, I disclosed that I was pregnant and I was about five months gone at the time. But you couldn't tell I was pregnant. So I disclosed I was pregnant and everything. And in my head, I just canceled it that, you know what, I'm not getting this job. Probably after my child, I'll come back. After having the baby, I'll come back and see if I could get interviewed. But you know, the interesting thing was the HRBPs at the time, the, I didn't even know they were HRBPs. I just knew they were the HR personnel yes. contacting me. They were so kind. They were like, okay, do you mind to share personal information? Can you, how far gone are you? Okay, what's your plan? You know, they, they were so warm. They were so... I just knew I wanted to be here because the way they related with me and in my head I said okay I'm definitely not the only one they were interviewing for this role I'm sure they'll probably give it to somebody else and everything but I got the job that's just I mean that's why I'm, I'm here right now mm -hmm. I, I got called and when I came in everything was prepared for me before and everything my laptop my chair when I came in, I was being treated like an egg. They were like, oh, <laughs> are you comfortable? Do you like this chair? You know, it, it just it made me feel very welcome. Yeah. Are you OK? Is your supervisor treating you right? You know, that just showed me that. Because before then, while they said, oh, I told them I was pregnant and they said, oh, they'll get back to me. Within the space of them getting back to me, I started reading on, oh, what's the law about, labor law about employing pregnant women, you know? Most of the things I saw online, even if the law would have said you can employ yes. pregnant women, most organizations would not employ not. you. Yes, yes. Because they don't want you to come after a few months, you say you're going on maternity, maternity leave. Yes. They don't want you to come and then you're dragging them back. But you, that wasn't the case for UBA. Because it's it's a beautiful thing to have a baby it's a beautiful thing to want to birth life but that shouldn't stop the the inclusion of women in the workplace it, it all has to do with um management or people at the top believing in what women can do because yes. um we can see that play out in some organizations the women 
there are just some roles that are not just for women. You can't just put them there. But because we have a management that really believes women can, they can do it. So from the lower cadre to the middle to the senior level, you can see that improvement. Now, women are often underrepresented in leadership positions. What strategies can organizations employ to break the glass ceiling and create more opportunities for women to advance into senior roles? Just deliberate about the the the, the composition of yeah. your workforce, and because those are the things that leads you to the the leadership. You don't just move to the leadership, and then as th they grow to the leadership, you know, to the management, you're also watching that space. Because honestly, if you have a good representative of the female and the male in your leadership, it just helps to drive. It says a lot about who the organization is. Historically, we going to look at history and the numbers. We see that there has really been an improvement yes. in female representation. Yes. But there is this. Um, we might popular... not be there yet. I mean, in, in Nigeria or in the banking space or in the corporate space, but there's a, there's a tremendous improvement. Um, and for UBA in particular. I'm a country treasurer, I'm a female. We have female CEO of Africa, in international right. banking. But there's a popular and unpopular I mean, opinion that yes. women at the top probably slept their way through. Wow. You see, there's a level to which that can even take you as a woman. Okay. Because, I mean, <laughs> you should, if you have the brains, you don't, see, you don't need to. You don't need to sleep with anyone. Okay, so are you saying you talk? don't need to, or it's not Why true? I think we should debunk well, that opinion. I, 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 I disagree like to totally. I, I, I disagree totally to that because a lot is needed for you to be in a yes. certain position. When you're a leader in your organization, you're a representative of your organization. And depending on the organization where you work, in financial sector, is a very serious institution. And the woman has to be highly skilled, brilliant, intelligent, visionary, and be able to carry people along. Sleeping with whoever would not even give you that. How do you relate to your customers? We have very intelligent, you know, customers. We, we deal with diverse, you know, top big organizations, multinationals, yeah. and yeah. so many. One of the ways through which organizations can debunk the so said sleeping to get your way through is by, um, engaging in transparent promotional criteria let people know that these women got to this place based on merits not by lobbying or sleeping their way through because i wouldn't want to be associated i think it's actually evidence people just decide to say things they shouldn't say apart from the balance which you've spoken to in uba is who can get the work done regardless of which country regardless of which culture mm. regardless of whatever background Male, female, you are welcome. So, I mean, it's, it's a laudable one, and um, I really want to applaud the board of UBA. It's a good one. As she said, we are not yet there, but we are playing in that space far better than our competitors, in my opinion. Thank yeah. you. I think we should give a round of applause to UBA. Yes. <laughs>